So the Chevelle is getting all kinds of new parts. We do have a new grill insert. Obviously, we're not going to put that in right now. We've got the new panel for the back between the deck and the window. We've got new front fenders, new radiator support. There are new hood hinges in here as well, and a battery tray and a front end hardware kit. The only thing we're missing for the front end hardware are the bolts that hold the radiator support to the frame. But well, we're gonna get started by bolting these parts on for two reasons. The main reason we're going ahead and bolting these things on is, well, to get them out of the way, because shop space is limited, and we need to make sure that we have room to do the work, and I can't have piles of boxes everywhere for all these projects. So we're gonna bolt these front fenders and the grill support on, and we're gonna get the hood bolted on as well. This way it's all together, it's mobile, it's going, and then we're gonna start working on our sheet metal repair and removing this dash. Spray all of your uh, existing bolts down with a little bit of penetrating oil. By the way, these new PB blaster cans suck. And there you go, we've got the front fenders mocked up. We just mocked them up with the original old hardware because we didn't want to use our new hardware. Whole box of it right there, okay? We just got this stuff kind of set in place. One, again, to remember to get it off the ground and two, so we can make sure everything's gonna work. Now we're gonna get this dash out of the way because we got a lot of rust repair. Well, in order to drop this dash, we do have to do a couple things first. One of those things we're gonna do is get the steering column out of the way. We're gonna completely disconnect it and remove it because it doesn't need to be in here right now, it's in the way. As far as the rest of the dash, I have no idea. We'll figure out how to take that apart as we go. I'm sure there's a YouTube video you could watch on how to do that. I've never dismantled a Chevelle dash, so learning experience. Well, there we go. The steering column's out. Now, if you notice I struggled a little bit, it's because I did it in the wrong order and I was too stubborn to put two bolts in and bolt the steering column back up. Disconnect your steering shaft, your shift linkage, your electronic connectors, and then drop the column. Now, uh, don't forget about the uh, five or six bolts holding the pad onto the firewall. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Let's figure out how to take the dash out. I don't even know where to start. finish up by removing the ductwork, the defrost. Uh, we may go ahead and just remove the whole heater box because we need to clean up the firewall anyway. And also if we're going to be welding in here, there's insulation on the firewall. It catches on fire pretty easy, especially when it's this old. So go ahead and remove it, finish removing the kick panels, and uh, that'll probably be it for now. Then we can start cutting and grinding and fixing things. The heater box is out of the way. This is that insulation I was talking about. I would really recommend putting on a mask and wearing gloves while you do this. I don't know what's in this stuff. There's also been mouses crapping in here, mice, mices, mooses, mice, mice crapping in here, and uh, there's no telling where in the ever loving hell uh, other creatures have been in here. So let's be safe. They don't make these masks for people with big noses. We're going to have to go ahead and take the brake pedal mount loose as well because there's some stuffed up under the top there that needs to be removed anyway. We've got it all contained in a bag. I'm going to throw it out and then we'll get this out.
Now, don't throw any of this stuff out. Put it somewhere safe. Obviously not outside, somewhere more safe than that. We're getting to remove the booster in the master cylinder. It's pretty self-explanatory, but just in case you've never done it before, master cylinder, booster. We're replacing both units. These are both garbage. There's no point in saving them. And uh, so you can leave them together and you can unbolt them from the firewall back here. It's four bolts or you can take these two bolts off, remove the master cylinder. Completely up to you. We're just gonna slip these lines, get them out of the way, and then we'll finish unbolting it. We're delicate around here. the wiper arms. Next we're going to move on to removing this trim piece. Now unfortunately all these screws are either already rounded out or stripped off or rotted in place so we'll be drilling them out. At a quick glance this part really doesn't look that bad but when you look a little bit deeper it is so pitted and it's about to rot through so we're going to go ahead and change all that. It was an absolute huge pain in the ass so the spot welds were so close to this edge here that I ended up cutting this with a cutoff wheel so I could see and then I couldn't tell where the spot welds were very well because it was so rotted so it took a long time. Also this panel much like most patch panels does not line up perfectly when it's level and in the right spot over here it's off over there so we're going to be having to uh, clamp it and spot weld it and work it as we go to get it into shape. So we went ahead and tacked in that lower gutter on the windshield and we only tacked it in because we got a lot of work to do on the front of this especially the gutters up here and the A-pillars. We want to get everything tacked in place and then set the windshield in there and make sure everything's still straight and lined up because how much would it suck to weld everything up solid and then realize the windshield doesn't fit? So, to make sure everything stays in place, that's what we're going to do. Next. Well, what is next? Well, we've got quite a lot, actually. Well, and there you go. It actually looks like a car now. We were able to get the inner fenders test fit as well. They showed up, which was great. We've got the hood temporarily on, again, just to make sure everything's going to work and line up. With all this new sheet metal, nothing is going to line up perfect. There's going to be lots of adjustments that need to be made. In the next video, we're going to continue on with the rust repair, fixing the rust around the cowl and the front windshield, as well as the back glass and the floors. Then we can move on to the next part of the project. If you have any questions about any of the parts that I used, or anything we talked about today, feel free to message me and I'll try my best to answer your questions. Until next time, happy hot rodding.